And I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is great to be with you again for this devotion. This is Tuesday, August the 11th year of our Lord, uh, 2020. And if you were with us last week, then you'll know what we're doing with the de occasional devotions uh, now are going back and tagging up on the other readings from this last Sunday. And again, for those of you who know the inside baseball, how things work with the lectionary of the uh, Lutheran Church. We've got two lectionaries or two sets of assigned readings that we follow. One's called the Historic One Year Lectionary, uh, and that's the more traditional of the lectionaries that's been uh, developed over time, over you know the 2,000 years of the Church's life. And then the more recent one was one that was developed in the wake of Vatican II and is used by the Roman Catholic Church, and then uh, a lot of the Protestant churches have tried to get in line with that as well. Uh, and that's a three-year cycle. It's called the Revised Common Lectionary. And each of the years in that cycle, their letter A, B, and C, uh, tends to focus on a particular gospel to read through uh, in, in a kind of sequential way. So this year, we're in the year A cycle of readings. We're getting a bunch of stuff from Matthew as our primary gospel for our Sunday readings. But then there are these other great readings that we get as well. We get a psalm that we're given every week to recite. We're given a reading from the Old Testament. We're giving a reading from the New Testament. And again, those readings follow sequentially. So um, I want to go back and, and get those lessons that we didn't talk about on Sunday morning. I, I preached again from the gospel from Matthew 14, but now we've got Psalm 18. We've got a, a passage from Romans and uh, another passage from uh, the prophets to consider as we look at how God is speaking to us today. So today we're going to look at Psalm 18, uh, the first 16 verses of it. And one of the interesting things about the psalm is that it it, it has a superscription, right, a little introductory uh, couple of lines to talk about where this came from in terms of who wrote it and, and what the occasion of its writing was. Now, we don't assign inspired value to these superscriptions, uh, but they are traditional in the Hebrew uh, Bible, and we have no reason to really dispute with them. Uh, we just can't say with, uh, you know, absolute doctrinal certainty that these are 100% inspired. So uh, I will read the introduction for Psalm 18, and then I have a few things to say about that, and we'll be done. The other thing I want you to think about, uh, and, and we talked about this last week, whenever we uh, sit down to kind of mull over scripture, Luther has that suggestion that if you've got the time and kind of the, the spiritual and mental space to do so, while you're listening, while you're pondering, go through that ITCP method again, right? I for what is this instructing me? What is this passage teaching me? And then T uh, is for the thanksgiving, to give thanks for those things that God has revealed, that God has given me, that God has blessed me with in this passage. Then to confess where it is that in my life I haven't really lived according to this instruction. I haven't really lived, thankfully, I haven't really stood on what God has revealed. And then finally, uh, have a little prayer, right? Pray that God enriches your life, continues to help you to grow in faith and understanding so that whatever this passage that you've been considering can really begin to shape you in how you speak and how you live, how you feel, and, and how you treat others and hand on the gifts that you've been given. So, I-T-C-P. I leave that to you. Uh, We'll jump into Psalm 18, the first 16 verses. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of Yahweh, who spoke to Yahweh the words of this song on the day that Yahweh delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love you, Yahweh, my strength. Yahweh is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God my strength in whom I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon Yahweh, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surrounded me. The floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of shale surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me in my distress. I called upon Yahweh, I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple. And my cry came before him, even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and a devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed down the heavens also and came down. 
with darkness under his feet, and he rode upon a cherub and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, the foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils, he sent from above, he took me and drew me out of many waters. Well, all very dramatic and story, right? Now, I think the first thing that's interesting to, to consider here is this psalm in opposition to our gospel reading from this last Sunday. If you were with us on Sunday, you heard the account of how Jesus came walking on the water uh, to help the 12 who weren't making much headway trying to get back to the other side of the shore. It was 3 a.m. in the morning. It was dark. They'd been rowing for hours and hours. And, and Jesus came walking to them in the midst of the darkness. And it was about a three or four mile walk if we have our measurements correct. So it, it wasn't you know this thing where Jesus flew to them with great power and glory and lightning and all that. He came out to them as a man, albeit walking on water, that's a, a little different. But he came to them as a man and he simply said, take courage, do not be afraid, it, it's I. And, and that stands in kind of lovely contrast to what David describes Yahweh doing for him when David cried out in his distress. So if you remember, uh, King Saul took a dislike to David, seeing him as a rival after uh, Yahweh had announced to Saul that he was not going to be established in a dynasty because of his faithlessness. And Saul was chasing David around in the wilderness and trying to, to kill him on a number of occasions. And David prayed to Yahweh, and Yahweh delivered him. And what's interesting is that deliverance is described in terms of the way that Yahweh delivered Israel from Egypt, right? The, the sending out of the fiery hailstones, the opening up the waters with the blast of the nostrils. You, you remember the plagues that uh, God manifested in Egypt to convince Pharaoh to let my people go. So you've got this glorious, powerful room Bust, energetic work that God does with the fire from his nostrils and his anger as he comes down and, and stretches the heavens out to come to David and, and pull him up out of the, the waters and the troubles that he was having, uh, opposed to Jesus, who just kind of walks out at three o'clock in the morning and says, hey, I'm here. I'm here to help. Don't be afraid. And I think one of the things that speaks to is our longing in the midst of our troubles, right? We want God to do something decisive in our lives. We want to see God riding on the winds of the wind, the wings of the wind, and, and riding on the cherub and coming to us with the thick darkness and the clouds and the thunder and the lightning to deliver us from our enemies so that we know definitively God is with us, God is on our side, God is doing what it takes to, to give us the salvation that we need. And that is going to happen at the last day, right? We, we know that Jesus will come again in glory on clouds with great power and strength and all the enemy will be vanquished once and for all. But for now, in these times between Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension to the right hand of power and the last day when he comes again, in these times, the primary work of Jesus is not just to deliver us from our enemies, but he's still gathering those who can be gathered into his kingdom. And so rather than acting with great force and anger and power and, you know, all sorts of scary bolting lightning stuff, Jesus oftentimes comes in, in the small and the subtle and the quiet ways. He is humble and lowly and gentle and righteous and having salvation. He comes to us. And we mustn't discount those times when he comes to us quietly and gently in the dark hours of the night in ways that we didn't expect, in ways that don't always seem spectacular because he still comes to be with us and he still offers us all the grace and the power and the comfort that we need for that moment. Um, if, if we go back and, and take a look at the Hebrew, a couple of things that stood out for me there were first uh, when David describes the Lord uh, as my uh, rock and my strength, right? It, it's it, that image of the rock is, is important because we understand that 
know, Jesus is the rock of our salvation. He is that cleft rock in which we receive grace. He is the rock out of which living water flows. And so when David describes Yahweh as his rock, there's, there's a messianic reference there. Not only is Yahweh the rock, but he says, you know, I'm going to trust in you. And the Hebrew literally says, I'm going to take refuge in you. And what greater trust can there be than to take refuge under God's shelter, to take refuge under his wings, to, to trust God to protect and guide, even if it doesn't happen in ways that are, are spectacular for the world to see. So we understand God is our rock because he's come to us in Jesus Christ. He's the one who's cleft for us and gives us living water. And so we take refuge in him. And we take refuge in him because not only is he worthy to be praised, but then David says, when he's talking about the distress that he experienced at the hands of Saul, um, our translations uh, here, this is the New King James, says, the pangs of death surrounded me, the sorrows of shale surrounded me. Well, the Hebrew word is the same for both pangs and, and, and sorrows there. And, and the word is literally cables, right? Those, those um, uh, metallic bands, right? So he said, I was encompassed by this metallic band of sorrow. I was encompassed by this metallic band of death, right? I wasn't given any room to move. I, I, I didn't have any place I could turn or go. And I think that's a familiar feeling, right? When sorrow, right, comes into our lives in, in a couple of different ways. Sometimes it comes as a weight that, that we just can never seem to be free of. But at other times, it is a kind of cable that, that binds us so that we can't turn anywhere. We can't do anything. We feel like our, our life has just been brought to a kind of end as this sorrow uh, keeps us from participating in those things that would make our life feel like it was worth the energy that we were expending. So God comes and he frees us from those cables. He cuts the bars of iron and, and sets us in a broad place so that we have life and have it in abundance. Um, so that's the, the Psalm 18 for you to think about and, and pray about that God is your deliverer. He's the one who draws you out of many waters, uh, whether he does so uh, on the wings of the wind with all that power, or whether he does it in Jesus, coming to you in the still, small hours of the night, walking on water to tell you, be not afraid, it is I. Well, that is enough for today. God's blessings to you all. I will look forward to being with you again on Thursday, and we'll take a look at the Old Testament reading from this week. Until then, peace be with you all. Amen.